Hey again, this is Steven Robles, and you're in the home stretch for setting all the parental controls for your child's devices. So let's finish up the last couple sections in the screen time settings. So I'm going to open the settings app again on my device. Again, you can do this on your iPhone or iPad. And if I'm not there already, I'm going to go to screen time settings. And just a reminder, if you have your iCloud family set up and you're sharing screen time across devices, you'll see your child here and can change their settings. If not, you can do the same stuff on your child's device directly, set a screen time passcode so they can't change any settings, and you're still good to go. This is just doing it in a way where you can change settings remotely from your device and you don't have to have their device in hand. So I'm gonna go back to my son here in the screen time and now I'm setting his parental controls or his screen time settings. Now the last couple sections we have to manipulate here are the communication limits and content and privacy restrictions. The last one is a pretty big section, but we'll go through all the options. So let's go to communication limits. Here, you can choose who they can contact and when they can contact them. During screen time means they can contact these people at any time during the day, whenever the screen is on. And again, remember the screen time passcode, which we're going to set in a moment. This is that screen time passcode that I've set specifically different from their device passcode. Remember, this setting will affect all your child's devices at any point during the day. And so I have it set to they can only communicate with people in their contacts app on their device. And I'll show you where you can actually change it remotely in a moment. But that's how I have it set. Now the second option, contacts and groups with at least one contact, you might want to do that if you have a teenager or a child that might have some friends and they do group texts. And even though your child might not have everybody's number, they have a friend that wants to add them to a group text. Well, that second option will allow your child to be able to communicate in that group chat, even if they don't have everyone else in their contacts app. So that might be a good setting in general, especially if you have a teenager. And then everyone means anyone, whether they're in the contacts app or not, whether you know the phone number or not, everyone is able to contact either by text, phone, or FaceTime your child. And so that's the wide open setting. Now I'm going to go back. During downtime, this again is that option for when it hits that downtime limit of 10, 11 p.m. to 8 or 9 a.m., however you have it set, do you want them to be able only to contact people in their contacts app or specific contacts? We talked about that in the last video, and so you can go back and watch that too. Now, the last options here in the communication limits, I have this toggle on because I want to manage the contacts on my child's device. I don't want him to have to add contacts or edit contacts, so that's why I have that enabled. And you'll see the contacts here, 13, those are the contacts on his device. And I can control it. I can delete someone, I can add someone, and it changes on their device. And so if I go to contacts here, You'll see these are the people that I've chosen to be in his contacts, and I can add someone if I need to. Then the allow contact editing. If your child, you want them to be able to make a change, maybe they have a friend who changes their phone number or their email address, and you want your child to be able to edit the contacts in their device, you can enable that, and this way they can edit them. If you're not sure if your child might change something that's not good or might mess up the phone numbers, you can turn that off and then your child does not have access to edit their contacts. So now I'm gonna go back. And the last section here is content and privacy restrictions. And when we jump into this section, this is where we get a lot of the granular details on setting parental controls. So you need to enable this section, so switch that little toggle to the right. And now we're gonna to go to iTunes and App Store purchases. In this section, you can choose whether or not they can install apps, delete apps, or have access to in-app purchases. And you'll see I've not allowed any of those. We've already loaded all the apps that we want them to have, and so I've restricted all of that. Now, if you want your child to be able to request an app to be installed, and remember, if they have that Ask to Buy option back in the iCloud family settings that we did in the first video, even if you allow them to install apps, it still sends you a request. So you don't have to worry about them just downloading anything and everything. They still have to ask. If you put don't allow here, 
the App Store actually disappears from their device, and they don't even have access to look for, search for, and request apps. So this is, I've not allowed any of those. Again, the deleting apps is helpful because if your child has a habit of wanting to delete apps or not sure what that means, you can put don't allow and they don't accidentally or intentionally delete apps. Then require password. If you do allow them to install apps, then you can always require them to put in their iCloud passcode or not require. Because I've set it where they have to ask every time they download an app anyway, I've set it to don't require. Now let's go back one. Now we go to allowed apps. Here, you can actually choose to make certain apps disappear, some of the stock apps that come on your child's device. If you have a very young child and you don't want them to have any access to surfing the internet, you can actually disable Safari, and now they don't even have a web browser on their device, again, which is great for certain age kids. I've disabled mail because they're not doing anything with email right now. I have Safari on because I've set some strict parental controls for web browsing, which we'll get to in a moment. And then you can choose what to enable or disable throughout this. CarPlay, we don't have a car that has CarPlay. If you do, again, you can enable or disable that. AirDrop, I leave enabled so they can share photos back and forth. They use Siri a lot, camera, FaceTime, so I have all that. Now I've disabled the iTunes Store. We do Apple Music, where I pay a subscription and everyone in my iCloud family has access to their own music libraries in that. So I've turned off the iTunes store. They don't need to be buying songs or movies. But if you have a teenager and you want them to be able to request to buy a movie, you can enable that. I have the bookstore enabled in case they want to search for books. I'll encourage that all day long. And you can set the parental controls on how mature the books are that they have access to. And we'll get to that in a second. I've turned off podcast and news because they're not doing that right now. But again, you can enable that if you have an older child or any child that you'd like to have access to that. Now I'm going to go back and I'm going to go to content restrictions. Here is where you set clean, expletive, all the age ranges for different apps. Ratings 4 is just your country where you are, so that should just stay the same. For music, podcasts, and news, again, for a child, you can flip it over to clean. If you'd like your child access to explicit content, you can put explicit there. Uh, music profiles, this is if they're browsing the music library or iCloud music that they can look at profiles for certain artists. I've disabled that. That's not something that they need to be doing, at least for my kids, their ages. For movies, this means that if you actually have Apple TV enabled, the app on their device and they can browse movies to ask to buy, you can set what ratings of movies appear in those apps. I've set it for PG, and I've also said show movies in the cloud. That means movies that I've purchased and are accessible in everyone in my iCloud family, that my child can see those movies as well, and they can watch them on their devices. TV shows, same kinds of settings. You can choose what ratings you want them to have access to or even see in the Apple TV app. For books, like I said before, I've enabled books on their devices, but just clean books. Then for apps, any app that you download in the App Store actually has an age range or an age that they re suggest. And so I've limited it to 12 plus. There's some games that really aren't that violent or gory, but the rating is still 12 plus, maybe because it's you know some kind of car crashing in a racing game. So I've put 12 plus, even though my kids are younger than that, because those apps are typically fine. Again, when they ask to buy or download an app, I still get the request and I get to see the app before I approve it. So I'll already still be able to preview whatever they're downloading. Now, web content. If you're going to enable Safari so they have a web browser on their device, this is where you need to set very specific controls. So I'm going to go into web content here. Now, unrestricted access means unrestricted access. They can visit any website, anywhere, whenever. Limit adult websites. The Safari and your Apple devices will try and do its best to not allow them to go to any kind of explicit or adult websites, websites too mature. So you can try that if you have a teenager and, and see how that goes. Uh, again, you can see what websites your kids visit, and I'll show you that at the end of the video. Or you can do the third option, which is the most control, which is allowed websites only. This is what I have set for my kids, and that means only the websites that I specify 
will even load in Safari. And you'll see I have some websites here like Discovery Kids or Disney. I have Khan Academy, which is an online learning platform. Math Lady, which is something they do for their math curriculum, videos they watch from a teacher there. National Geographic, things like that. And you can add a website down here. You can title it, you paste the URL that you want them to have access to, and then they can have access to that one. You can also, on their device, if they try to visit a website and they get blocked, they can send a request for that website to be added to this list. Again, especially if you have younger kids, this is a great option where they can only visit the websites that you specify right here. So I'm going to go back, and now we go to Siri. Now, Siri is a little bit risky because you can ask Siri to search the web. You can even ask Siri on an iPhone or iPad to search for pictures. You could say, show me pictures of whatever, and it'll do it. So if you don't want them to be able to search the web through Siri, you can not allow that or change that setting here. So I'm actually going to put don't allow because I don't want any web search or content to come up if they try to search in Siri. Same thing for explicit language. You can either allow Siri to speak or search for explicit language or not, and so I don't allow that either. Now here at the very bottom are the final settings. For Game Center, multiplayer games you can either allow or not allow. This would be even something like Minecraft or Fortnite. If you want them to be able to play online with friends or family, you need to be able to allow multiplayer games. Or you can not allow, depending on the age of your child. Same thing with adding friends. Some games allow them to search for friends and add friends so they can start a game easier. Well, you can allow that or not allow it. And I allow those, again, because I keep a pretty close eye on the games they're allowed to download and what they're doing with those games. And then screen recording is actually something I'm doing right now. I'm recording the screen of my device so I can put it in the video. And your child can choose to record their screen also. So that's a feature you can either allow or not allow, depending on your preference. That's the last setting in these content and restrictions here. And now if I go back, now you'll see share my location. This is something where if you use the Find My app on your iPhone or iPad, you can see where their device is located. I want to be able to see that in case they lose it. So I have allowed share my location. Now in their Find My app, they can actually share their location with a friend or family member. Now, because I locked down the Contacts app, they don't really have access to share it with some random person. So I allow it here. But if you can, if you want to set it so they can't share their location from that app to anybody, you can put don't allow there. Now, these last few changes are also very important. Passcode changes. I don't want my child to be able to change the passcode they use to unlock their device. If they change it and forget what they changed it to, you're locked out of that device. There's not really much you can do. Or if they try to change it on you so you can't access their device. Whatever the reason, I always do don't allow passcode changes so they cannot change the passcode on their device. Account changes. These are things like to add an email account, to change their iCloud account, or any other kind of account that they add to their device. Again, I set up their device myself, and I don't want them to log out of their iCloud account by accident or add some mail account. So I put don't allow account changes. Now if you have a teenager again and they might be adding email accounts for school or something else, you can choose to allow that and this way they can add their email accounts. Cellular data changes. We haven't gone over this, but in the cellular settings on your child's iPhone, if they only have an iPad that's Wi-Fi, they're not going to be cellular. There's no cellular settings. But on an iPhone, you can go to cellular and you can actually choose what apps don't and can't access cellular data. Now, here's the reason why you might like that. Let's say your child or your teenager watches a lot of YouTube, and they're actually watching a lot of YouTube when they're not at home, and so they're using lots of cellular data. Maybe they're running over your data cap. Well, on your child's iPhone, and this you do have to do on their iPhone, you go to the cellular settings in their settings app, you can go down to the app like YouTube and you could turn off the ability for that app to use cellular data. And you can do it app by app. So messages, FaceTime and all that can still use cellular data, but YouTube can't, or maybe Instagram or Snapchat, you could say those apps cannot use cellular data. 
Then once you've set that setting on your child's device, in the screen time here, you put don't allow cellular data changes so they can't re-enable that. That's a helpful setting. Do not disturb while driving. This is a setting where, let's say you have a teenager or an older child, and they're actually driving. Well, there's a setting called Do Not Disturb While Driving. Now, whenever their device connects to a Bluetooth car, and the phone automatically connects to the stereo, that it enables Do Not Disturb. This is a setting where all notifications are silenced, and they won't get texts or calls except for emergency family members. And if you want that setting enabled and don't want them to be able to change it, you can put Don't Allow here. The last two is TV provider. Again, if you have a TV provider like DirecTV and you log into their device so they can use that in certain streaming apps, you can do that. They can either have access to change it or not. That's a pretty minor thing. And background app activities, you're probably not getting into this setting, but this is something where if you don't want an app like uh, Instagram or Snapchat pulling data and doing stuff in the background when your child doesn't have it up on the screen, you can go into general background app activities on their device and disable certain apps and then you can put don't allow here so they can't change it. Again, most apps are not doing anything too crazy in the background. Um, you know, Apple does a good job about limiting what apps can do so I leave this as allow, not a big deal. And that is the last part of the content and privacy restrictions. And once you've done that, you pretty well have your child, your teenagers, their devices locked down and they won't be able to change it unless they have that screen time passcode that you have set. And so that's all the settings available to you in the built-in screen time settings or parental controls on Apple devices. I hope that's helped you out. If you have any questions or you need help, again, click the button on this page and I'll try to answer your questions and get you through so you don't get stuck. I hope you've enjoyed this course on screen time settings or parental controls on Apple devices. Let me know if you appreciate it, if it's helped you, a success story or testimonial. I'd love to hear it. Again, you can click that button right here on the page that you're watching this to send me a message. Be sure to take a look at some of the other courses that I have here online, and I would love to help you learn any of that, whether it's podcasting or making a website or email marketing. I have courses on those two coming very soon. Thanks for joining me on this course. We'll catch you next time.